By 1931, hard times seemed to be everywhere. But if you could still spare a dime, you could slip into a glamorous world where the roaring 20s had never ended. You could go to the Grand Lake Theater, uh, hear Horace Height and his orchestra play for half an hour. Then they'd have the movie tone news. And then they'd have the feature story. And then they would have Bugs Bunny or the equivalent comic. And then they'd have the second feature. And by that time, the orchestra was getting ready to play again. So you could spend about six or seven hours for 15 cents. There was no television. There was only radio. So this visual escape into a dark theater, you could literally uh, forget your troubles and get happy. Many people try to dance their troubles away, often to the carefree, irresistible rhythms of a new generation of jazz music that was sweeping the country. Swing. Swing it, honey child. Susie Q's going to town and how. Richard Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy, friend to those who have no friend. Many more were transfixed by the gripping dramas of radio. During the Depression, the radio was the one appliance people could not live without. I used to watch the radio. It was like gathering around television. There was the shadow. Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? Shadow knows. <laughs> <laughs> Turn off the lights. <laughs> we're going to clean them out today. You didn't know that they were standing on a stage reading from scripts. You just thought they were doing it. All right, boys, let's hit out. What I liked most was to go into my room and turn off all the lights. I didn't want any interference and just listen to it. My father thought I was a little weird, and he'd always come in and turn the lights on and say, what's wrong with you? And I said, nothing's wrong with me. This is really wonderful, a great way to listen to it. 